we'll get started here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying out, this is the first time I've used my headset with my computer. Um, Cause the, uh, for some reason, my computer um, um, voice card and the sound card just deleted itself. So I, so I don't have the sound on the computer, but I can connect my, but I can connect my, uh, my Bluetooth headset, my good old trucking headset in with it. And, and, and I'm getting, you know, it's coming through loud and clear. So that's, so that's you know, working pretty good. Let me go ahead and cancel uh, this out. All right, there we go. Let's get over here. And we do that. And uh, we'll get started here. Y'all give me a second. I'm just setting everything up on YouTube. Come on. All right, here we go. Sure, we got everything done. Okay, there we go. We're now live on YouTube. Everything is good, is good there. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, got it. All right, how's everybody doing? Um, we, we're probably going to have some more people joining us. Um, we may not because they just got in. Some people haven't even um, submitted their back office access yet, but we got a lot of new people who have joined us here this past couple of weeks. Um, I got some announcements on some new stuff that we've got that we've um, been adding, um, able to get done as far as you know our um, our training site and things like that. A um, lot of exciting things are happening. A lot of exciting things are happening. So um, we gotta go. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. But tonight um, is dispatch training, and so I'm going to start my recording. All right, good evening, everybody. This is Calvin Butler with the RBBS Logistics Center Center and the National Dispatchers Network. And tonight is Thursday night. Um, it is 7 17 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it is time for How to Dispatch Series. And tonight we are on part three, which is the pitch. Last week, we went over how to find the carriers, uh, located carriers. The week before that, we went over compliance and everything you need to, uh, to dispatch straight from home. The right type of equipment, what you know, is dispatch illegal? We went over the statutes and things of that nature. So um, last week we went over um, um, locating carriers, showed y'all how to use our back office tools and resources to locate uh, the carriers. So once you have located the carriers, then you got to pitch. So that's what we're doing tonight. We're doing the pitch. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, Barbara, Tasha, Washington, Kinsha, Gamble, Pratt, um, Legacy. Darren Stevens, you know, we got quite a few people on right now, but we got a, a whole lot more people who are going to be coming on probably, hopefully, because uh, we did we did sign up a lot of new people uh, last week and on yesterday. So we're starting to, you know, people are starting to get that bug. You know, they want to dispatch freight, they want to broker freight. So they're coming over to the training, they're looking to see out these training platforms. And I have to think that we have the best training platform out there. And there's some things that are going on that is going to help us solidify that here in the coming future. All right. So let me um, let me go over a couple of things with y'all that that to give y'all some updates. Um, let me start sharing my screen here real quick. Give y'all a couple of updates of some things that um, we was able to put into um, motion that's going to help us out a lot. Um, if you all haven't noticed, I've been sharing on Facebook. Um, you know, a lot this morning because we had some things that we that 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 we had some some people we are partnered up with some um, industry uh, type things that we partnered up with that's going to help us a lot when it comes to enrollments and making our platform more affordable. Um, as you all can see here, we are now partnered with Afterpay. 
I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't know what afterpay was. <laughs> but apparently, a lot of you all do know what afterpay is. And it's a great um, it's a great product. It's a great service. Afterpay allows it is another payment option that is now in our um, checkout cart. It is now in our checkout. So when you go to checkout, when you go to our back up, when you go to our square store, or when you go to order something through us, anything, you have the option of using Afterpay or paying with Afterpay. Now, Afterpay is is basically exactly what it sounds like. Okay, um, is exactly what it sounds like. Pay over four weeks or six weeks. Okay, um, you can now use Afterpay when you sign up for any of our enrollments. If 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 you just short on funds and you don't have all of it right now, or you just don't want to pay the whole thing right now, you can use Afterpay and pay over four weeks or six weeks. Now, if you pay four weeks, there's no interest. It's interest-free if you do the four-week um, um, afterpay option. If you do the six week, they're gonna put a little bit of interest on it. So four weeks or six weeks, and everything that we offer in our Square store, all of our enrollments, our you know, business opportunities, the whole nine yards, you know, the, the trademarks and things like that, all that now can be done with afterpay, okay? So now, don't don't worry about, you know, if you're saying, well, if I use the afterpay, how soon can I get access to my back office two resources and the platform? You get access to it right away because afterpay pays us the entire amount and then they wait to collect the rest from you because you, I think when you sign up with, after, with afterpay, you have to download their app, then you have to put in your, you know, your card information or your bank information, or whatever that is, and then they deduct that from your card or from your bank every week for that four weeks in equal installments. If you sell for the six week one, they deduct it in equal installments over six weeks. Okay, that's how afterpay works. Now, some of, some people have asked the question: Well, what about the monthly subscription? If you if you opt for the afterpay, we delay your monthly subscription uh, by another month. So already when you when you enroll now and you pay with your debit or credit card, your, month, your first monthly subscription payment doesn't start till 30 days later. But if you use Afterpay, it's going to start 60 days later. So, you know, if you're doing a four week transaction, it's not going to run, it's not going to overlap because it's going to take you four weeks to pay it off. Then you got another um, 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 uh, 30 days before your first monthly subscription is due. Okay. So, Afterpay is a great thing, it's going to help us out a lot to get more people um, in, more people are gonna be able to, you know, sign up for our platform because, you know, if they can stretch those papers out, I'm sure that's gonna help them a lot. We also have, uh, I've also um, gotten the lenders for our vocational school, the financial aid um, lenders, to agree to open up their lending to personal loans. So now, if you want to, Take out a, you know, if you're signing up for, let's say, corporate enrollment and it's $999, whatever the case may be, you can get a loan for that. And that loan um, can be up to $50,000. Rate start at 5.99%. It can be stretched out for 24 to 60 months, zero prepayment penalty. And then work with credit scores as low as 580. If you if your credit score is at least 580 and you can show the ability to pay back, you know, the loan, there's a great chance that you're gonna get approved. Okay. Now, if for some reason you put in for a loan, let's say twenty thousand dollars or whatever case may be, and you don't get approved for that, they're gonna give you, they're gonna suggest that you put in that you redo it, but lower the amount, cut it, you know, I'll take it down to half that, to like ten thousand dollars or or seventy five hundred bucks or whatever the case may be. So now. Um, you have the ability to get, you know, you have the option to apply for a loan through our lenders, and then you can use that money to then pay for our platform, or if you get some extra money, you can use it to, you know, upgrade your house or you know, buy a car or whatever you want to do because it, it's a personal loan. Okay, so these things are going to help us to uh, greatly increase our enrollments. It's gonna help people to be able to afford, you know, uh, uh, 
just a whole wide range of things when it comes to the RBBF we just done. Um, this is a great option for those of you who are thinking about or wanting to do your trademark and become an owner of your own RBBF to just learning centers. If you've been waiting, trying to get the money up, and now you can go and you can apply for, you know, a loan, you know, uh, through our um, website, you can go, matter of fact, let me show you uh, where you can go. You can go to our vocational school site over at, over at drbbsllc.com. Go to our vocational school site, and then on the main page there, you'll see where it says, you know, uh, apply for financial aid. Well, now when you click that, you can apply. That can be done for personal loans too, okay? So when you see right here, financial aid loan program, you can, you can click that now, and it'll take you over. It tells you, takes you over to our loan partnership page. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba, ba. Pulls it up. There it is, right there. The RBBS with just learning centers. Um, you know, see how much you qualify for. Uh, we work with the most advanced lending solutions to provide you the financing you need, a type of financing for residents in the USA only. Seeing how much you qualify for takes two minutes and has zero impact on your credit score. Loans up to $50,000 rates. Um, start at 5.99%, 24 to 60 month terms, zero prepayment penalties, okay? And they do work with, you know, um, 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 with lower credit scores at lowest 580. And when you hit the click for finance, it takes you over to like a little, a little quick app. And then it, and then when you get to the app, it, it then tells you that you can actually, um, you can actually get a loan for up to $100,000, okay? There it is right there. Shows you right there. It tells you what you know, what the max amount you can get approved for if you have the income to support it. Now you gotta have the income to support whatever amount you're trying to get. So you gotta, you gotta show that you can you gotta ha have the ability to pay these loans back naturally. Okay. And the loan purposes can be for just about anything. Um, debt consolidation, credit card, refinance, home improvement, um, major purchases, that's a catch-all. Business, that's another um, catch-all, vacation moving and relocation, medical expenses, taxes, and of course the the all um, catch-all is is the other. So um, you can pretty much you know, apply for and use that money for whatever you want to use it for. Very short form, you just fill this out and um, then you submit it. You submit it and then it'll show you your rates and all that type of stuff and you know and what you are approved for and things like that. So there you have it, okay? So this is going to um, help us to be more accessible to a lot more people. If, if, if anybody out there was thinking about, you know, doing some stuff with us, um, either. A, you know, this or, you know, trying to get the money to pay for the tuition to our vocational school, or if you're looking to become your own, to own your own. RBBS is just not center. You want to invest in the trademark. If you were thinking about, well, maybe I think about getting a twenty-five hundred dollars trademark. Well, now if you can get a loan for the ten thousand dollars, you're going to get the ten thousand dollars trademark, and they'll stretch that payment out over sixty months, so it becomes very affordable. Okay, so they so then you can take advantage of you know what you need to take advantage of immediately. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> All right, uh, let me get rid of this. All right. Get back to our training here tonight. All right, here we are. All right, tonight is uh, the script. How much money do you need to move your truck? Now, for our new people, when you come to your back office site, you're gonna click where it says Dispatcher Tools and Resources. And it's gonna take you over to our Tools and Resources area where you get to access all the stuff. Okay, and you're gonna see this video. Watch this video first. That kind of tells you where everything is, how everything works, and, you know, how to use everything once you get back. All of these, you got your how to dispatch series, you got all, all seven videos in here, so that you can, you know, go in, you can binge watch those if you want. But tonight, we're going over the script, so we're gonna be, get down here in the um, in the area, we're gonna find the script. Now, the script is gonna be in the um, 
agreement forms and documents there. There it is right there, the truck with the money on the back of it. Now you'll notice if you put your cursor over the place, over the Rolodex, it will tell you what 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 that particular uh, Rolodex uh, placement um, is for. And you notice here, you put your system resource quality control audio quality. All right. And can y'all still hear me? I want to make sure everybody can still hear me. Yes. Can everybody still hear me? We can. All right, good. All right. All right, great. So you put your, your cursor over that, let it sit there for a moment, and then the pop up will tell you um, what that is. And that is right there how much money do you need to move your truck? So tonight, we're going to go over the script. Okay, that's what we're going over, over tonight. All right. Um, because this is, this is how you make your money. This right here. Okay, let me stress something to you all. The, the script is the probably the most important thing because nothing happens until you get someone signed up to a contract. You are not, you, you, can, you, you can have your, uh, your autism corporation, your EIN number, all that type of stuff. You have all that type of stuff done. You're complying with the whole compliance. But you are not really legal to operate as a dispatcher until what? You have an owner operator on the contract. Because remember, the statute states that dispatchers must have an agreement, a pre existing agreement for a continued relationship with a carrier defined said carrier suitable freight before you can start going looking for loads. Okay. So that's why I said you must have a pre-existing agreement. You cannot go to load board. You cannot start looking for loads. You cannot start, you know, you know, telling people, hey, I got loads. You can't do that. You can't do any of that if you do not have a pre-existing agreement for a continued relationship with the owner operator, the fine said owner operator super freight, persuaded to say an owner operator specific criteria. That's the statute. Okay. So Ultimately, what makes you legal as a dispatcher is you must have an own operator on the contract. Okay? So you're not a bona fide agent until you have someone to be an agent for. Does that make sense to everybody? Does everybody yeah. understand that? Okay. Want to make sure that we're clear on that. So that, that makes this part of, you know, the seven-step series, this is a very important part because if you can't convince owner operators to you know sign your dispatch agreement then you just did in the water now we showed y'all how to find the owner operator showed y'all how y'all can find thousands of them. we showed y'all some soft closes you can go to the low boards you can pull up pull up you know uh, the truck sites you know uh truck placements to see where the trucks are and you know you know let you know who's looking for a load those are soft clothes. I would start there. Okay, if you are, you know, new to this, I would start there with a the soft clothes. If you, those of you who are coming in, Johnny, come lately, and you don't know what we mean by soft clothes, go back and watch last week's video. Okay, locating carries, how to locate carries. Okay, it's on that YouTube channel. If you got one, you got it here in the back office too, so you can go and watch it. So, um, locating carriers right there. Step two, locating carriers. So go back and watch that video if you don't know what soft clothes are. Okay? All right. So I will start with the soft closes first, um, soft close prospects first, and then work my way to the, you know, the hard close because you're not gonna have you're not gonna have a whole bunch of soft close um, prospects. You may have max. 50 or 60 of them, you know, on any given day. But remember, we want y'all to call and pitch 50 on operators per day. Okay, that's what we want you to do. But if you pitch 50 a day, you're going to close at least one of them. And if you're doing that five days a week, Monday through Friday, by the end of the week, you got five on operators. Five on operators, dispatch four loads, each on operator, average on per week, average miles, 700, 750 miles, average rate, $1,400 to $1,600 on your low fees. 
if you're charging 10%, that's going to give you total yearly revenue somewhere in the neighborhood of $176,000. Okay, $156,000 to $176,000. And that's not working hard, that's just working smart. Okay, five on operators dispatch them four loads per week, averaging $1,200 to $1,600 on the load fees. Your fee is 10%. You do the math on that, that comes out to be somewhere between $156,000 and $176,000. It's not bad, but just five on operators. Just follow the steps. All right. The pitch. Now, I want everybody to understand something. This is sales. Okay. I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care what anybody tells you. This is sales. The, the most important, the most important and the most valuable asset or the most valuable skill that you can possess is your skill to sell, okay? You And and, and you're selling yourself. You gotta sell this to the owner operators you call them. Cause a lot of, cause the majority of the owner operators you're calling, you know, you just call them out the blue. So you gotta sell yourself. You gotta sell yourself. Now the script is designed to keep you on track. The script is designed to keep you on track. Okay, so if you follow the script the way I the way I'm going to pitch it to you, you're not going to have you shouldn't have any problem with staying on track and not and and you shouldn't have to guess what you're going to say next because you're always going to say the same thing basically in following the script. You're just going to follow the script no matter what their response is. Your transition is going to be the same, and what you do after the transition. It's going to be the same. You're going to ask for the clothes every every single time, every single time. And I'm going to show y'all um, how that is. All right, let's see who we got here tonight. Um, we got some people on here tonight. All right. Uh, who wants to do some role playing with me tonight? Who wants to be an owner operator? Anybody wants to be an owner operator tonight? All right, while y'all deciding on who was going to be the owner operator tonight, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the script. And I want you all to decide which one of y'all is going to volunteer to be an owner operator tonight. Do, 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 do. Don't everybody jump out all at once now. <laughs> Come on, being an owner operator, that's fun. I'll do it, Mr. Calvin. <laughs> All right. Who, who's this? It's Tosca. I should have known. All right, Tosca. <laughs> way to go, way to go, way to go. All right. All right. You got to be the owner operator. And 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 don't make it easy. Okay. Put up a fight. <laughs> okay. okay. I sure will. All right. So I want you to put up a fight. No, don't make it easy and put up a fight. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you all um, how if you follow the script um, and if you stick to the script and the transitions and things of that nature, you should not get lost. Now, this is a formal version of the script. I put this, this is here just to give you all a kind of a layout as to the guidelines of the script. But what I really want you all to do is go back and play our role playing on the script and go back and find the script, um, the training where I did, there's a couple of trainings where we actually called up on operative live, okay? And play that video and also play the past video of, of where we're doing role playing. Cause I want you all to pitch the script the way that I pitch. Okay, don't go word for word by this formalized version. But well, this formalized version is real formal. Nobody really talks like this. Nobody really, nobody really talks like this. You know, greetings. My name is. <laughs> you know, I'm you know, independent dispatcher with such and such and such. We have over 200, you know, nobody really talks like that. Okay. That's not how you talk in real life. Okay. I'm gonna show y'all how to deliver this pitch in a real conversation in real life. All right. So 
let's go ahead and get rid of this. So let's kind of have a real conversation and let's go ahead and and uh, stop my share so we can get it on us so y'all can focus on what we're talking about here. All right, here we go. All right, Natasha, I'm ringing up. You're the own operator. Ring, 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 ring. Thank you for calling Tasca's transport. How may I help you? Hey, is this Miss Tasha Washington? Yes, this is she. Hey, Miss Washington. My name is Calvin Butler with RBBS Transport LLC, and I am a dispatch firm. And I know that you have uh, a sorry. super truck. I, sorry, I'm, I, I already have a dispatcher. I understand, but let me ask you a question. Okay, got to be How much money do you... Ma'am, I can barely hear you. I'm sorry. It has to be quick. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. How much money do you need to move your truck? Um, hmm. How much money do I need to move my truck? Why Why you ask me that, sir? Because everybody has a number that they need to have to make their truck profit. So I'm asking you, how much money will it take for you to move your truck? Uh, well, the way gas is set up, I need about four or five dollars a mile. All right, so four or five dollars a mile that's great because look, with my dispatch firm, I only look for freight that's paying the kind of money you want to get paid, going to the places you want to go, pulling the kind of freight that you want to pull. So, where can I send my dispatcher people to? Well, I already have a dispatcher, and my husband helps out too sometimes, so I don't know if I'll need you. Look, I completely understand, but let me ask you a question. If your husband or your other dispatchers looking for your freight one day, and they're pretty good at what they do, I assume, and they're finding you some decent paying loads, they're, pa they're finding you freight that's paying four and five and six dollars per mile, because you say you need at least a minimum of four dollars per mile. And let's say you get on and you're looking for freight because you really know what you're doing because you've been doing this for a minute, and you're finding loads that's paying six and seven dollars per mile. And then I call you up, and I got loads that I'm offering that's paying $10, $12, and $13 per mile. Which loads are you going to run that day? Well, of course I'm going to run yours. I mean, it's paying more, so <laughs> I guess I'll take look, yours. Yeah, and you're exactly right. Because, look, I'm not trying to take the place you know, of your husband. I'm not trying to, take, trying to take the place of your other dispatcher. All I'm asking is this. Give me an opportunity to make you some great money. Because if I find you some good paying freight, you're going you're gonna to take it and you're going to make money. And I'm going to make money. If I don't find you good paying freight, then you're not going to take it. So you don't have a loss in the thing. So with my dispatch service, you can only win. And I promise you, I promise you, I'm never going to call you if I can't, if I don't have freight that's paying what you've already told me that you got to have. So you know, when you see my number on your call ID, I got the kind of freight you want going to the places you want to go making the kind of money that you want to make. Where can I send my dispatch equipment to? Well, sir, I mean, I said I was in a rush, and it sounds real good. Can you call me back tomorrow? Sometime tomorrow? Uh, I, I, Ms. Tasha, I dispatch freight 317 carriers every single week. I don't add carriers every day. So, I'm, so, I, so, so I need to know right now, where do you want me to send your dispatch equipment to? It's to take two minutes. Give me an email address. Give me a cell phone number. I'm back in Texas, too. And I can text it right to you. You can sign it and send it back over to you. And that'll be the end of it. And I'll go ahead and find you some great being free. Now what, now, what can I send the dispatch agreement to? But how much is this going to cost me um, for your services? And, and I'm going to have to sign another dispatch agreement? Like I said, it doesn't really matter. Because if I'm charging 10%, which is what I charge, but if I'm finding you freight that's paying way more than the $4 um, per mile, that you need. If I'm finding your freight to spend six, seven, eight, nine dollars per mile, my 10% does not matter because you're going to make great money. Now, where can I send my dispatch people to? Uh, I don't know. I, I think I need to. I, I don't know. I might. I want to think about it because I don't like just, you know, signing stuff and having to be obligated. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I understand, but let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Are you are you not sure you want to make good money? Well, yeah, I, I do want to make good money. And I mean, you know, I'm, I we are having some issues, you know, staying consistent sometimes. 
All right, look, look, here's the thing. You can't lose money with me. Because if I can't find you a good pair of freight, you're not going to take my load. You have a loss in it. If I call you a good pair of freight, you're going to take the load and you're going to make money. And you do want to make, you do, you do want to make good money, right? Yeah. And you do want to stay busy, right? Oh, yeah, we definitely need to stay busy. Okay, so what can I send my dispatch agreement to? <sighs> Mr. Calvin, you made it hard to refuse. You can go ahead and send it over to Tosca at Tosca'sTransport.com. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> All right. Look, 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 y'all. If you stick to the script, the script kind of guides. Okay. Now, here's what you all have to understand. And, and, she, and she, she did a great job in putting up a fight. But you, but here are the keys to being good at closing these people, being good at sales. First of all, learn the script the way I just pitched it. Okay, learn the basics of the script. You all notice every objection when she said I don't know, or she you know, put up an objection. My transition was the exact same thing. I understand, but let me ask you a question. I don't care what the objection is. You go through the same transition. The reason why you want to use the same transition over and over and over and over again, because you don't have to think about it. If you start going, um, let me think something you say, uh, then you're gonna sound like you don't know what you're talking about. And when you sound like you don't know what you're talking about, you've lost it. You've lost control. You've lost it. But as long as you stay in control, and the only way you stay in control is to stick to what you know, right? The same old transition. Because that sets you up to get prepared to do what? Set them up for another close. And you're using the same clothes over and over and over again. What can I send my dispatch people to? <laughs> Y'all know how many times I said that? Know how many times I said? I understand. Let me ask you a question. And the question I asked them was basically the same thing they did just told me what they was having problems with. So there's an old saying in negotiation and in closing, you know, in sales. He who speaks first loses. Okay. That means that once you hit someone with a close, shut up. Just shut up. Let them speak first. Because they're either going to say yay, or they're going to say, I don't know. Or they're going to say, uh, nah. Or they're going to say, or they're going to come up with some other type of excuse of why they should do it. But you can't respond to whatever they're doing, whatever they're saying, until you hear what they have to say. So that's why it's always says, he who speaks first is going to lose. So you wait for them to say what they gotta say, you make sure you take note of it, cause that's gonna be your answer back to them. If, like when she said, well, you know, you know, I already got a dispatcher, you know, and uh, my husband dispatched straight for me. My trans, I, I waited for her to to say that, and then when she said it, I understand. Let me ask you a question. Did I repeat back to her the same scenario, but I just reversed it? If your husband or your dispatcher is looking for your freight one day, she's already told me she wants what? $4 per mile. Right? That's why you got to listen. You got to listen because people will tell you everything you need to know to close them. That's the whole point of keeping, of letting them speak. That's the whole part of the script. The script is really a trap. It really is. <laughs> it really is a trap. When she first came on, she tried to be hard right out the gate. Let's make this quick. I don't have a lot of time. She just did me a favor. So then I can go straight to, let me ask you a question. How much money do you need to do your truck? <laughs> I, she just gave me the excuse to spring the trap right away. No need of me trying to get to know her. No need of me trying to introduce myself. Just spring the trap, Mr. Butler. <laughs> go ahead and put me in this trap so I can try to fight my way out. <laughs> so by so by her rushing the process, all she did was put herself in the trap a lot quicker. Did y'all notice that? Definitely. Yes. Yep. Because the trap, so the trap is how much money do you need to move your truck? That's the trap. Y'all know why that's a trap? Do you know why it's a trap? Yep, tell me why? They're going to tell you exactly how much they need because they they want that number. <laughs> exactly. 
it's a it's a question they have to answer. There's no other way to respond to that except to answer the question. And when they answer the question, they told you everything you need to know to close them. <laughs> they the trap is how much money do you need to move your truck? If they answer that question, then their fate is sealed just by answering the question. Because everything that comes after that makes the trap smaller, 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 and smaller. Tasha, didn't you feel like you was that like the grip was tightening with every yeah. with, 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 with with your your I, every I, um your every objection, the cage got smaller. Yeah, I was running out of excuses basically. It was hard to say anything to that. And that's the and that's the whole purpose of the script. Okay, the script itself is a trap. The first question, how much money do you need to move your truck? That's the trap. You just sprung the trap. They're gonna have to answer. There's only one way to get out of that trap. Can anybody tell me the only way you can get out of that trap? Oh, I know. <laughs> Look, tell if they hang up on you. <laughs> exactly. The only way you can get out of that trap without signing my dispatch agreement is to hang up on me. And believe it or not, that is a very hard thing to do for people. It, it's, it goes against everything that's in your human nature to just hang up on someone. Even though you may want, even though you know in your mind and in your heart, I, man, I need to hang up this phone because he got me. He going to sell me. He got me. I'm going to sign that dispatch agreement. If I don't hang up this phone, gonna sign it. you just can't hang up the phone. It's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to do. People will sit there and they'll go round and round with you for 20 minutes and eventually wind up having to sign your dispatch agreement because they just can't bring themselves to hang up on someone else. <laughs> it's human nature. It's human nature. So the trap is, the key is, get to that question. How much money do you need to move your truck? If they are trying to rush you, that's good. That's good, because they just rushed themselves right into the cage. <laughs> right? Because you notice I didn't I didn't I didn't try to you know fight with her. We just said, hey, let's make this quick. I don't have much time. I didn't say, well, I'm not gonna take much of your time. I, I said, oh, okay, that's great. Let me ask you a question. How much money do you need to get truck? Spring the trap right away. And she knew she was trapped because when she when she heard the question, she went, oh uh, <laughs> and did y'all catch that? She went, ooh. <laughs> and then, then she tried to get she tried to get herself out of it. Okay, um, um, what's the purpose of that question? <laughs> Cause you right. too good. I was curious at that point. <laughs> yeah. So, so she she knew she was trapped. Okay, and, and trust me, it works that way with everybody. Their responses may not be exactly the same, but they're gonna be similar. All the responses and reactions are going to be similar. All you got to do is stick with the format. Stick with the script. Do not try to come up with anything new. Because if you try to come up with something new, you're done. You're done. You may be able to add live a little bit, but go right back to that script. So when she said, well, what's the purpose of that? I add live a little bit, but everybody has a certain number that they need to make their truck profit. Those I said, right? She said, yeah. All right. So my question is, how much money do you need to move your truck? I went right back to what? The trap. I didn't spend a whole bunch of time. I clarified. She asked me, well, what's the purpose of that question? I just re I just reinforced the trap. Right? right? Everybody has a number that they need to have to make their truck profit. So I asked you again, how much money do you need to move your truck? Go right back to the trap. Go right back to it. Don't deviate from it. Don't try to come up with something new. Stay with what you know. Because if you stay with what you know, you sound like you know what you're talking about. And when you sound like you know what you're talking about, you sound confident. When you sound confident, you're in control. The minute you start going, uh, oh, I, uh, you, 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 you might as well just hang up the phone <laughs> because you're done. Okay? And remember, your transition. 
same transition, no matter what. After you ask for the clothes, shut up. How much money do you need to get truck? Shut up. Don't say nothing. Wait for them to say something. Because the first person who speaks is going to lose. Okay? The, 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 I'm, I'm serious. Trust me on this. The first person who speaks after the clothes is going to lose. Because if you make the clothes, you present the clothes. How much money do you need to get truck? And if you follow up with something else, then you got to keep following up with something else. And, and, and now you don't know what you're talking about. You sound like you don't know what you're talking about because you sound like you're not in control. Stick with the script. Use the same transitional phrases. I don't care how many times they come up with objections. You say the same thing. I understand. Let me ask you a question. Well, I don't, I don't need this, 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 this. I understand. Let me ask you a question. And then the question you're going to ask is going to pertain to what they just said that they didn't want. You said that you didn't need this, but let me ask you a question. Okay. You do need to make more money, right? Yes. All right. Like I said, I'll look for freight. There's, look for those. There's paying the kind of money you want to get paid. Go to the place you want to go. Pull in the kind of freight that you want to pull. Where can I send my dispatch? Go right back to the clothes. That's how you doing. You reinforce the trap again. I only look for that. That's your response to their question. Okay, what the question is. That's your response to it. I understand, but let me ask you a question. And that question is always going to be, Pertaining to them making more money. Pertaining to them making more than what? That $4 per mile, that $5 per mile. It's always going to go back to that because they've already told you what you need to know to close them. You don't need to know anything else other than that to close them. How much money do you need to move your truck? <laughs> Does everybody see how simple and how ingenious the trap is now? Does everybody see that? Yep. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Do you all think you all can can pitch that pitch the way I just did it? Because let, let me ask y'all a question. People always, they ask me all the time. This is what Calvin, uh, uh, you can do that because you know, you've done this a thousand times and you got it down pat and this is that. Okay, great. Then Pitch it to yourself until you get it down pat. I'm, I'm going to give y'all some homework <laughs> uh, tonight. I want everybody to go back and watch how I did that pitch. Go back and replay this pitch. Okay. Then I want you to turn on your computer, turn on your webcam, and record yourself pitching the pitch. Pretend like somebody's on the other end pitching the pitch. If you need to call someone on the phone and tell them to be a on operator and, and don't make it easy on you, you know, or, or whatever you got to do. If you got to go get your spouse, have them to be the owner operator, and you pitch that pitch the way I just pitched it. If you, if you have to do it 10 times until you get it down, use the same transition. I understand, but let me ask you a question. Go back to the same clothes. Use the same clothes. After you, after you, after you address their objection, well, I already, I already got a dispatcher, or I had a dispatcher, and they didn't do the job right. I understand. Let me ask you a question. If that dispatcher had a found you freight that was paying more than four dollars per pound, and had a found you loads that was not pulling heavy weight, but had a ran you in areas that wasn't you knowing the mount kept you on the flat lane. You would still have that dispatcher today, right? Yes. Like I said, I only look for freight. It's paying the kind of money you want to get paid. Going to the places you want to go. Pulling the kind of freight that you want to pull. Where can I send my dispatcher to? It's the same thing over and over again. You, you answer their objection, and then you go back to the close again. I only look for freight. It's paying the kind of money that you want to get paid. Going to the places you want to go. Pulling the kind of freight that you want to pull. Where can I send my dispatch people to? Notice I didn't get sick and try to come up with some exercise. I Hello? took the same thing going over again. Hello. Yes. How are you? Hello. Are you talking to us? Sorry. No. You got your mic open. <laughs> we all need your conversation. All right. So 
Um, look, it's all about sticking to the script. Okay. That's what it's about. It, it's about the trap. So that's what it is. It, it's a trap. That question is a trap. I don't care how you, I don't care. I, I don't know any other way to explain it. That question is a trap. So what I want you all to do, I want you all to sit down and I want you to record yourself doing that pitch. If you got to get someone to, you know, a partner or husband or wife or call up a friend of yours or, or somebody and you pitch that pitch and then you go back and you watch yourself in your facial expressions, your body language, and your tone of voice as you are responding, as you're giving the pitch. Because believe it or not, if you if your facial expressions and your body language is not confident, you don't sound confident. Does, does everybody believe that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Because the way you sound, the way your body expression, your facial expressions, the way that goes is a is a direct is a direct reflection on how you sound. It is a direct reflection on how you sound. So get comfortable with the script. Learn the script the way I just pitched it. And if you learn that pitch the way I just pitched it, there's not a soul in here that can't tell me that if you pitch that pitch the way I just pitched it, to 50 order operators per day. Let me just, and let me just ask you all, how many order operators do y'all think you could close if you pitch that pitch the way I just pitched it? If you pitch to fit on operators every day, you'll definitely close at least one a day. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's a given. That's a given. So then it becomes just about the numbers, right? All it becomes is about the numbers. Get fifty pitches out, not fifty phone calls, fifty pitches. Okay, so some of y'all may be kind of calls that 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 nobody picks up, or oh, I may fifty phone calls. Well, of them didn't pick up, but I made 50. No, 50 pitches. <laughs> <laughs> Pitch 50 on the operators. Okay? So I call the on operators between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. at night. Why? Because that's when they're not doing anything. They've been driving all day. They shut down about 3 o'clock. They went into the truck stop and got a shower. Came back out and got something to eat. They sit down in front of the TV set, probably watching a movie or something that they don't want to watch because someone else got a remote control first. That's the time to call. Or they're back in their truck, in their bunk, watching the satellite TV, you know, in their truck or something. Or they're on their computer. Look at, on their computer looking for freight. That's the perfect time to call them. Right? That's the perfect time to call them. During that time, call and pitch 50 on operators. I look, I guarantee you, I guarantee you. Okay, this I it, this is the only guarantee that I give you. I, I am guaranteeing you this. If you learn that pitch and pitch it the way I just pitched it, and you pitch it to 50 on operators a day, you're going to close at least one on operator out of every 50. By the end of the week, you're going to have five on operators. If you're following the training, the way I show you all how to locate loads and how to identify dedicated freight and how to find these loads and do the back, um, and do the reverse searches and the back hauls and this and that, you're going to dispatch them a minimum of four loads per week. And you're gonna average out, you're gonna average out whether you're running them three loads a day or one load a day or whatever the case may be. If you're averaging out, you know, 750 miles on the load, 500 miles, whatever the case may be, you're gonna average out anywhere between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars per load or per day of dispatch. Okay. So if you're doing that and you and you dispatch them four loads per week, and you're charging your 10%. That's going to give you the neighborhood of one hundred and fifty to one hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars a year. This is not that hard. It it truly is not that hard. It it really is just a matter of just doing the work. That's all it is. It's just doing the work. If you don't believe me, ask Darren Stevens. Ask Miss Washington. She's got enough people now that that she's pissed enough of them to to to, to, to what she understands. It's just about doing the work. And, it's, and, and it just becomes a numbers game. 
That's all it is. It's just a numbers game. The more on operators you call, the more you're going to close. The more you close, the more you're going to have to dispatch for. The more you dispatch for, the more money you're going to make. <laughs> it, it really is just that simple. But you got to do the work. You got to do the work. And some other stuff you got to do, you got to, you got to develop your communication skills. You got to have a conversation with, once you sign your carriers up, you got to have a conversation with them. We talk about that uh, when you get, when you send them their, um, their, their, their profile form, when they send their profile form back and you have that, and you all go over that profile form, that is the time to have that serious conversation with them about, okay, you're the driver, you're the professional driver, you drive the truck. My job is to find you good paying freight. That's what I do. I'm very good at it. Let me do my job. You do your job, I guarantee you, we'll make a lot of money. But we can't make money if I try to drive your truck. We can't make money if you try to tell me what freight is good paying freight. <laughs> right? Yes, we exactly. We've got to do our job. <laughs> you know, we've got a role to play. We've got a role to play. You know, the, the, if, if you're up in here, let me, let me share my screen here real quick. If you're up in Where's my screen share at? Did I lose my screen share thing? Where's my screen share? Oh, here we go. Uh, there it is right there. All right. Share my screen again. All right. Let's say if you're up in, let's go to one of our low boards here, um, direct freight. If you're up in, if you got a carrier, and this is what I mean by having these conversations. You, you got to let the carrier know that you are good at what you do, and they need to listen um, to you because you're the expert. You have a bird's eye view of what's going on. They do not, okay? You have a bird's eye view of what's going on. They do not. So you got to instill in them that you're the expert. All right, so let's say, let's say you're looking at the load map, okay? And you notice here on this load map, as you're looking at the load map, you notice here, if you got a carrier who's up here in Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, right? Or if you got them up here in North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, Nevada, right? What's the problem with that? Ain't no freight up there. You know, 106 loads, 37 loads, right? They got to travel, you know, distances just to make decent money, right? But if you got freight down here in Texas, right? Right now, you know, you got freight down here in Texas, Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, you know, PA, Indiana, Ohio, Illinois. And you tell someone who's up here in Montana and North Dakota, and they're telling you, they're trying to tell you, well, you know, I don't want to go down past Utah. Or I don't want to go over past Iowa. <laughs> right? You, you can't make them no money, right? Right? Right. So you got to let them know that you're the expert. You have a bird's eye view of what's going on. I need to move you down here to Texas or Florida or Alabama or Georgia. Why? Because even if I move you to Florida, right, with just those few loads right there, 718 loads right now, uh, so at this time of the night on a Thursday night, right? If I move you down here to Florida, and with them 718 loads, come on, pull up. If I go over here, go over here and I click this estimated rate uh, per mile, because I'm evaluating the low board. Now, I know in Florida, right, I can put you on loads. Dedicated loads, like 
right here, Tampa to Port Rich, right? Or this Jacksonville to Orlando, right? Right? That one run almost every day. <laughs> they do run every day. <laughs> it's upset in a second. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? This Winter Haven to what you call it? You know, all these loads this, right here, Jacksonville out to Lakeland. All these loads are dedicated runs. You see what I'm saying? So if you bring them down here, you know you can put them on stuff that they can run every day and make decent money. Five ninety nine per mile, right? Eight hundred bucks for going a, for going what? Um, one hundred and forty two miles. 800 bucks. Can't they run that and have enough time to run back? Yes, they can. Okay. They make it, they make it 800 bucks going one way, right? So if you can find them a load coming back, you know, on the other way, chances are it's going to be somewhere in the same neighborhood money-wise. Now, you're going to have to do some work to find them a load that's coming back. Orlando to Jacksonville. Let's say 150. All right. Well, Lando to Jacksonville, estimated rate uh, per mile. Do that again. Now that's going right back on another way. You're going to go 60 mile dead here, grab a load in Lakeland, and go to Davenport, which is not far from Jacksonville. Or you're going to go to Gainesville which is right there next to Jacksonville, right? Or you're going to go to Port Rich. You're going to go, uh, you're going to go 90 miles, dead head, and grab a load from Tampa to Port Rich, which takes you back close to Jacksonville. You're not far from it. You see what I'm saying? Now, that's only a 39-mile run. But what you're really looking for is something like this right here, the Elkin, Florida, to um, 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 you're gonna want to go to um, what was it, Gainesville, Florida? That's gonna put you real close to Jacksonville, and you're gonna want to go like to Elkin, Florida. This is gonna probably put you somewhere close, or you want to go to um, Polk City. These places like this, Polk City, you know, right up around it, um, around in there, even um, you know, here's Gainesville again, okay. Gainesville to Gainesville. That's a one mile run. But you got to check to see what the rates are by going to your what? Your rate calculator, your lane calculator. But even if you just go with a load like this right here that takes you back to Gainesville, which is right there close to Jacksonville, that's $925. So you got a load that's going, pays you $800 going up, right? Without even, even negotiating the rate and paying you $925 coming back. Is that not is that not good money? Just going there and back. Yeah, that's great money. Yeah, that's like sixteen hundred dollars a day, almost seventeen hundred dollars a day. So, you no, know, somewhere in that neighborhood. That's before you even negotiate a rate. So, if you got a carrier who is way up here in you know in these areas. That when they're not making any money, or they gotta travel all over the country just to make some money and get back home every two to three weeks, wouldn't it make sense for them just to come down here and run all week here, or run all week here, or run all week here, or run all week here, right? Or run all week here, here, and here. One, two, three, them right here that close to each other. 896 loads, 771 loads, 802 loads, and 1,009 loads. That's really like one state because it's so close together. So you run all week here, or you run all week down here, or here, or here, or here, and then you go home every weekend. Because if you get down here, you're doing about $1,800 a day on average, anywhere from $1,500, $1,200 minimum to anywhere probably close to $2,200 to $2,500 a day, five days a week, running the same loads. Versus up here, you got to run all over the country just to get some despair and freight and you get back home every two to three weeks and you ain't making near as much money because you're running three times as much in fuel. You 
You see what I mean? You got to have these conversations with them. You have to get, you have to make them understand. One of the, they got to have to decide what they want to be. They got to want to have. To, they got to decide if they want a lifestyle. If they try to live, if they try to live a trucking lifestyle. They ain't trying to make no money, or if they want to run a business. I run business. I'm not in the lifestyle business. Okay. Business tells me that you need to relocate from North Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, down to Texas, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio, PA, Indiana, Illinois, and run in these areas all week long, and then rent your car or bring down your personal vehicle at some point in time, and you drive back home and leave your truck down here at a good secure location. And you come back on Sunday night and be ready to Make that money again for that next week when them saying dedicated loads. See, that's business. A lifestyle is you want to be a you want to run all over the country so you can have a you know a different fling or a different guy or girl or whatever it is you're doing in every state. That's a lifestyle. You can't make no money trying to live a lifestyle. You make money running a business. That's the conversation you all have to have with your carry. I guarantee you, Darren Stevens has had that conversation with his carry. I've had that conversation with my carries. I guarantee you, people who are making money, they have that conversation with their carries. Because their carries rely on their expert advice to make them money. And that's what you have to get. You have to get in that type of relationship with your carries. Okay? And a good way to establish that is. Is really the script because if you because if you pitch that script in control the way we do it, you are setting the tone. You are setting the tone for your relationship because they already know that you are no nonsense type of person from you pitching this, from you with, 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 with the script you, with the way you pitch in the script. So they kind of expect you to be straight business, straightforward with them. And tell them what they need to hear to make some money, right? You're not in it trying to make them, you know, trying to spread their feelings. You're trying to help them make money. And if you conduct yourselves in that way, you pitch that script. After you get them signed up to your dispatch agreement, you have that conversation with them and you set the tone. You're not going to have any problems with the carriers because the carriers are going to listen to what you tell them to do. Why? Because you're able to see the entire country. In most cases, they're not, they don't see it like that. They're thinking about their little area or where they like to be. Or they they like these areas because they got a certain person over here and a certain person here and a certain person there and a certain person there and a certain person there and a certain person there. You see what I'm saying? That's a lifestyle. You can't, you can't mix business and lifestyle decisions. <laughs> it's never going to work. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> exactly. It's never going to work. You have to decide what you want to do. Want a business to make money or live a lifestyle? Okay? All right. Questions. Open up for questions, 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 questions. Go over here. Uh, got some people watching on uh, YouTube, but nobody's checking in. But questions. What's your questions? Questions. Tonight on the script on what we just talked about. Questions. So everybody got the script down pat. Everybody understands the script. Um, I got a quick question. So, like after yes, Ms. You... Okay. Hi, everybody. But um, I wanted to know, like, so after you okay, you, you do the pitch and then you send them um the uh, agreement and stuff. So to how long should you wait? Like if you don't, if you don't see that they hadn't signed, how long should you right. wait before you call them back? That's a good question, but that's next week's class. <laughs> but, but, okay. but it's a good question. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm going to ask you a question, but, but, but we're going to go over that again next week because next week is the dispatch agreement and carry profile. Okay. Oh. After you after you have closed them and they say okay we well, are going to shoot your dispatch you know, so, 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 you immediately go ahead and you send them that dispatch 
Okay. Now, I have a conversation with them at, at that point. I'm going to go ahead and see you this this Here's what I need you to do. Okay. Um, here's what I need you to do. I'm going to need you to go ahead and sign that distress agreement, fill it out, or send your profile form. You're going to fill out that profile form. You're going to tell me how much money you need to move your truck. You're going to tell me where you, where you like to run and, and where you don't like to run. You're going to tell me if you don't like to go up in the mountain. You're going to tell me if you don't like to pull X number of weight or whatever it's going to be. You're going to lay out to me how it is you like to run, what type of freight you like to pull, how much money you need. Now, as soon as you get that back to me and that signed dispatch agreement, the sooner I can find you some good high end freight. So I need you to get back that back to me right away. Okay, do you agree that it's very important that you get that back to me right away? Get them to get them to commit. Do you agree that it's very important that you get this back to me right away? Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so yep. all right. So, 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 I'm gonna send you this now. You're gonna send it back to me tonight, right? Put the pressure on them to commit because I'm because I'm not gonna go to bed until I get it back. From you. So you're gonna send it back to me tonight, right? <laughs> you know, right. feel guilty. Mm -hmm. like, okay. Don't see, don't see up all night if I don't send this thing to. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> this is sales. That, that, that's all this is. This is sales, you all. It's sales. It's sales. Everything is about getting them to sign on the dotted line and getting that dispatch agreement and that profile form back to you as soon as possible. And so make them commit. Make them see the urgency in it. The sooner you get this back to me, the sooner I can start finding you some high paying freight. You get this back to me tonight, I can probably have you on load tomorrow morning paying great money. Oh, really? Yep. Well, what's that kind of freight thing? Well, I can't, I can't do any of that because it's, it's illegal for me to even discuss freight with you until I have a signed dispatch group. So, Let's take care of the, let's do what look let's take care of, of first things first. Give me that dispatch agreement signed. So after I got that signed dispatch agreement, then I am officially your bona fide agent. So the statute says that I can't even go to low board looking for freight until I have what? That pre-existing agreement. <laughs> right? Yep, that's true. Right. So let's make this legal. So I can do this legal and find you some good paying freight. Go ahead and get that sign back over to me. And I'll go to work for you tonight. Find you some load. You have you some options by tomorrow morning. Good, good deal. Make them commit. Good deal. All right. So I'm going to get that. So you're going to send this back tonight, right? Because I'm not going to be until I get it. <laughs> yeah. You know, make them commit. Make them commit. Because because now by you. Responding in that way, what does that do? What does that do? That does a couple of things, whether you know it or not. It puts, that, know what. it puts pressure on them to get it done because they want to make sure you get them that good freight. Yeah, yeah, but not only that, what does that let them know about you? Uh, that you mean business and that you know yourself. Exactly. Exactly. That's what you're going for. Mm -hmm. You are letting them know that boys, she don't play. She, ooh, she about to be a pit bull on this freight. Well, I feel like I got somebody who wants to get it, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's true. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's what that that's what reflects on you. That's what you are exemplifying when you are behaving or when you are acting in that. That manner, you're showing them that you are serious about your business. You're showing them that you ain't in this for the lifestyle. You in this for the money, right? Right. And, and you can't make no money if you don't make them some money, right? That's what owner operators want. If you come to the locker days, oh yeah, just get that dispatch back. You get it back to him many times this week. You say the tone of it. He ain't really, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't really excited about what he's doing. And he tell me, I get it back to him in the kind of, so he don't really, he, he ain't got no kind of urgency. Oh no, I might have made a mistake to me. This is the time I sent me a dispatch group because he's not like, he ain't trying to get it back. 
<laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yes. You uh-huh. control. You are in control. You control how they feel about you. You control the you control the relationship. You establish yourself as the dominant one in the relationship. You are establishing yourself as the expert on your end in the relationship. You are establishing yourself as the one who is in control. And that's what they want. That's what they want. They don't need you if you're not going to be in control. (laughs) Right? If you're not going to take control and take care of uh, that Raycon information, you know, take care of negotiating with them uh, brokers, take care of getting the, you know, the broker carry agreements over and all that stuff done, take care of getting that paperwork done, take care of getting them EFS checks and that stuff paid for and, and, and getting that detention pay. And if you're not going to take control of that, they don't need you. Right? That's true. So let them know that you're in control. Because that's what they want. That's what they're looking for. That's what they need. Okay? So you have to remember, this is this is this is all still sale. You are selling yourself. You are selling yourself. You're selling your services. Okay? And you are taking control. Because ain't nothing worse. I'm telling y'all right now, there's nothing worse than a dispatcher who is not in control. That <laughs> if the carrier is controlling you. That is the most frustrating thing in the world. Very true. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you now. If you ain't in control, boy, they're going to waste your time. You ain't going to make no money. They're going to feel like you ain't doing your job because they're not letting you do your job because they feel like they got to be. No, 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 no. That's not, how this, that's not how this works. That's not how this works. Some people say, well, I don't want to piss them off. Who cares if you piss them off? Because if you piss them off, that means that they, you ain't got no business working with them anyway. Right? Yeah, that's true. If you trying to make them money, it's going to piss them off, then that relationship was doomed from the start anyway. That way going to never work no how. So it's best to know right now and just touch the mouse and move on to the next person. Because it's a numbers game, y'all. It's a numbers game. That's why I don't do box trucks. That's why I don't do splinter banks. That's why I don't do hot shots. Okay? <laughs> That's why I don't do Because it's a numbers game, and they're a waste of my time. I'm giving y'all a heads up. For all you out there who like to go out and contract box trucks and spinner vans and, 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 and hot shots and what's up? Uh, cargo vans. You're going to spend a whole lot of time finding freight that ain't paying worth nothing. Facts. <laughs> okay. Stick with stick with what there's abundance of. Dry van semi, flatbed semi, reefer semi, power only semi. Notice all those things have, have the same thing in common. Semi. <laughs> not box. Not sprinter. Okay. Not cargo. Not Hot shot, semi trucks. That's the name of the game. That's the industry. The industry is built to support semi trucks. The industry is not built to cater to box trucks, splinter vans, cargo vans. The industry, the way these low boards, every every low board out there, every mainstream low board out there, only caters to semi trucks. I don't care what low board you go to, if you look for boss trucks low, you ain't gonna find very many of them and they're gonna be very low paid. Okay. I don't care what state you're looking in. So you know what I'm talking about. If you out there looking for boss trucks, you, you actually like looking for boss truck loads. <laughs> yeah. If you out looking for boss truck loads, you are you are wasting your time. Let's go to Texas where they got a lot of freight there. For this time of the night. Hey Calvin. Yeah. So my my power only, I got a roll-up door trailer. 
So call a broker last night and try to book a load. I said, well, before I go any further, um, I'm going to let you know the trailer is a roll-up door. And his question was, what is that? <laughs> I, I, I was like, uh, uh, he got me there for a minute. I was like, uh, what, what, do you, what do you mean, what is that? He said, what's a roll-up door? I said, a trailer with the door rolls up. It's not a swing yeah, door. It door rolls, rolls up. up. It doesn't swing I said, open. It rolls up. So I said, can that trailer be used? He said, yes, um, there's no problem with that. I said, okay. Well, I said, well, you need to find out because I don't want to have my driver go to the pickup and they refuse him. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, exactly. Because shippers are, shippers are very picky. Look, remember what I told you? This industry is has a very narrow-minded view when it comes to what they want. This industry is built to cater to the traditional semi-trucks and trailers. Hear me when I tell y'all this, like Darren just said. He didn't even know what a roll-up was. Yes, it is a semi-truck, and there's a regular-sized trailer, but it has a roll-up door. And some shippers don't want roll-up. Mr. Calvin, I had a situation with my box truck. Um, they ended up going to a shipper, and even though the book uh, the broker uh, got all the dimensions and everything right, they still wouldn't use the box truck. They said they requested a drive-in. So, of course, that was on the broker. Exactly. Like, like I said, this industry is not built for box trucks. If you go ahead and look for box truck loads, now this is in Texas. I, I mean, look at this. This is what you got. And look at the rate. You're going to waste your time, you know, booking a load that's paying five cents a mile? <laughs> that is a real rate, y'all, for a box truck. Y'all see that? Yeah. You're going to waste your time booking a load that's paying 89 cents a mile? And it's got to go 618 miles? Not gonna make any money. Nobody is. It's gotta go, it's gotta go 980 miles, 500 miles, 50 dollars, 980 miles. You you gonna run out of gas when you get there? <laughs> oh, that buddy, right? Yep, that's true. Look, this industry is not designed to support these type of of trucks. Okay, they're just not. They are just not. They're not. Okay. So it's nothing personal. Okay. And 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 mark my word now. Some of you are gonna go out there and try to have a bunch of boss trucks. You're gonna call me. Yeah, I don't have a trouble finding loads. Okay, well, 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 what's looking for a boss truck? Okay. Didn't I tell you that? <laughs> this is business. Stick with what makes money. Stick with what you have an abundance of. Now. Is there a market for box shows? Yes, but it's not on the low booths. It is not on the mainstream low booths. Someone turned me on to a low board that has a lot of box truck loads, but it's five hundred dollars a month. It's expensive. A it's bit like five hundred a month. I was just about to say that. <laughs> yeah, five hundred dollars a month or lower. It's, well, I'll be, yeah, yeah, it's all about stylus or, or selectus. Select. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's called select. Five hundred dollars a month. Now, they got a lot of loads. They keep you running. But it's $500 a month with loads. Now, the low booth. Now, I'm going to tell y'all how to I'm going to tell y'all how to find how to keep a box truck running. They got to go back old. They got to go old school. Old school, old school, old school, old school, old school, old school. If you got a refrigerated box truck, you got to look for um, 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 fish houses. Fish houses, um, you'll say fish houses near me or just wherever you're at. If you're in Pensacola, you got to click Pensacola. If you're in, you know, wherever, whatever, you got to click, you got to click fish houses, um, yeah, if you got a refrigerated box truck, 
you're gonna click, you're gonna go fish houses near me or wherever that box truck is. The box truck in Saratoga was in Texas, it was in Dallas, whatever you're gonna click, you know, put in fish houses with you no know, near the area. But you're gonna go fish houses, I'm near me. Okay. Um, if you're looking for a refrigerated box truck, you're gonna come down here and you're gonna see this area down here. It's gonna pull up an area. Uh, was I on Google? I was trying to go to Google. I thought I was on Google. But usually what happens is, let me let me go to Google. It's sent me to Yahoo. I hate it to does that. Go to Google. Because you're going to do a Google search. All right. Get out of that Yahoo. All right. Fish houses. Dude. Fish houses. Go to Google search. All right. You see, all right, when you go to Google search, and you're, you're going to pull up stuff like this. And then you're going to click more places. Right? Now it's going to pull up all the fish houses or seafood houses or warehouses, all this stuff that deals with that type of with fresh seafood, right? All right? So then if you've got a box truck driver I'm in that area, you're going to contact every last one of these mom and pop shops. Chuck's Fish Tallahassee, Tally Fish House Oyster Bar, CK Crab House, Wahoo Seafood Grill. You're going to contact all these people. And you let them know, hey, I got a guy who has a refrigerated box truck. Okay. Uh, I know y'all have to get your fish from here to there and fresh fish in. This is that. He can move it. Uh, can he come by and show y'all what he has and see if we can work out something with you? That's how you got to do it. You got to go back old school. You got to knock on some doors. You got to meet some people. You got to shake some hands. You got to negotiate face to face. Y'all see what I'm saying? If you got a box truck that's not refrigerated, you're going to look for something like um, parts houses. Parts houses near me. Same thing. What about bread? Look at what stuff. Yeah, you're looking for stuff that that truck can accommodate. You see what I'm saying? That's what you're looking for. You see all these parts houses? Now, you got to stay away from the auto zones and stuff because those are really, like, mainstream and they, and they got their stuff already together. You're going to go with, like, these little Napa, you know, um, you know, some of the you know, mom and pop stuff. That's from Cargo Van. Parts house. Yeah. Yeah. Cargo Van, box truck, same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm to come to parts. You know, when it comes to parts, you know, um, stuff like that, ring power, things like that, you know, you know places like that. Okay. But that's what you got to do. Another place to go if you got a refrigerated is mom and pop um, grocery stores and convenience stores. Okay. When you're going to be making pick up from a certain place, deliver them to them, back to that store, you're going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But that's daily work. That is constant work. It keeps you busy. It's going to keep you paid. This is how you make money with box trucks, cargo vans, etc. If you got a splinter van, go to these medical centers. Why? Because they have all this stuff, that, medical stuff that they have to transport back and forth. Sometimes you're taking medicine to uh, uh, like, like, if you go to these senior houses, Right, where they have outpatients. Sometimes the seniors can't get to can't get to the pharmacy to get stuff. You gotta have people to go do that stuff for, them, make those runs, buy and deliver stuff back and forth from the hospital to the senior care um, assisted living place. You see what I'm saying? That's how you make money with box trucks, and vans, and cargo. You're not gonna and 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 you as a dispatcher, it really doesn't. It's not going to benefit you to do this stuff. Uh, as you see, it's going to take up a lot of your time. <laughs> right? It's yeah. going to take up a whole lot of time. You, know, what you, you spent a, two days trying to find a load for, for a spur van or a box truck, but you could have found you know load for eight, ten, ten semi-trucks each day and made a hell of a lot more money. Don't waste your time with this thing. Look, some people say, Kevin, you being hard on, no, I'm not being, I'm just being real. Okay, you got to be realistic. 
Because I got I got people that call me up now. Man, I can't make no money. Man. I can't. I got I got about five trucks. I got five no people. They, they, every time I try to find them, I can't find them. No, well, what you looking for? Well, I got five box trucks. <laughs> what did I tell you about? What did I tell you about box trucks? Yeah, but I thought maybe I could find some crazy for you when you thought like that. I told you don't waste your time. Because this is what's going to happen. I'm not telling you this because it's something that I'm that I think I know. This so I'm telling you what I what I know. I'm telling you what I know. I've been doing this a while, yo. I have been doing this a while. I've been pretty successful at it. Okay. So and I say this all the time. I tell people all the time, don't don't mess with, you know, don't waste your time signing on these box trucks, spinner vans, and cargo vans. As a dispatch, it's not worth it to you. It's not. Okay? I'm not trying to discriminate against box truck drivers. <laughs> I'm not. But I'm just I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you know, like it is. All right? All right. Uh that's got about do it for tonight. Um, I hope y'all learned something. Uh, I try to make sure that every time we come on here. You know, you all do learn something. Let me uh, stop my share here. Hope y'all learned something. Hope y'all got a lot out of it. Um, probably next week, we're going to have a lot more people. So we did get a lot more people to sign up. And I'm expecting a lot more sign up because we're doing some stuff now that's going to allow people to, you know, give people the ability to sign up, you know, even if they're low on finances or whatever it may be. We got some things in place now with the uh, afterpay and with the personal loans that people can get to pay for our services and our platforms and things. I mean, we, I mean, our, this thing is opening up in ways I can't even really talk about really right now, but it's opening up. <laughs> Trust me, I tell you that. It is, it is opening up and there's some things happening that's, that's gonna, oh my God, it's gonna put us, it's gonna put us out there, y'all. Okay, but we're opening up. We are opening up. And I, and I expect it's not going to be long before we get our approvals for the VA and all this other stuff. And so with, now, when that happens, the price is going to change on our enrollment fees. Um, those of you who are already in, don't worry, you're in, you're grandfathered in. But for those people out there who are listening, if you've been on the fence or been waiting, you know, or trying to pick the right time, well, no time like the present. Because once we get those VA approvals and we make these, you know, these moves that we're going to be making here pretty soon, the enrollment fees are going to go up um, on our platform. Now, you're going to have access to a whole lot more stuff. You're going to have access to several trainers. Not, not just going to be me training. I have access to a whole bunch, whole bunch of you know, new faces and trainers and experienced people. A um, um, whole bunch of training platforms that you're going to be able to go to different training. You're going to be able to Tune in to different training platforms, live training platforms. We're going to have several different uh, YouTube channels, several, um, you know, different mentors that you all can book private consultations with. It's, I mean, we're just, it's, it's really, we are really about to really open up and become the go-to platform when it comes to freight broker dispatch and owner op training. This is going to be the go-to platform because you're going to get so much stuff by just signing up. And it doesn't matter which RBBS and just learning center you sign up with, whichever one you sign up with, you're going to have access to all of us and all of our training platforms and all of our training materials and whole nine yards. Okay? So we're making some moves. We are making some moves. <laughs> so hang on. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be one hell of a ride. All right, everybody. I appreciate y'all. Hope y'all learned something. Um, I thank y'all for joining me. Uh, thank you all, each and every last one of you all. Um, I hope to see y'all back here, some of y'all back here on Saturday for our uh, uh, broker, um, the broker's hour. We have broker trading every Saturday morning from 10, 15 a.m. till about 12, 15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Monday nights, we have our owners meetings. Um, we're not going to be broadcasting any more owners meetings live. From here on out, owner meetings are going to be private until well, unless, unless we have a special one that we have that we may broadcast, but it's going to be private. And the owners' meetings are going to be um, posted on our new 
uh, private uh, Facebook group. I'm creating a, a, a private group just for the owners. So I'm going to try to have that done by Monday. So by this Monday, I have that private group up. I'm going to have one on Facebook. I'm going to try to have one on LinkedIn, too. So we, we're going to have two private owners groups, one on Facebook, one on LinkedIn. So we're going to be posting our stuff there. And, and the only people who are going to be able to access that stuff are RBBS, the just non centers owners. So in order to become an owner, you're going to have to, you know, take advantage of our uh, trademark usage opportunity where you can become an owner of your own RBBS with just another sentence. All right. Uh, so I got a question here real quick. So I click down here. This question. Oh, somebody said thank you. Well, thank you. You're welcome, Ms. Johnson. Um, but uh, look, thank you all. I appreciate you all. You all have a great night. It's getting right at 9 o'clock, so it's about time for us to shut it down. Thanks, everybody. Y'all have a good one. I'll see you, you. all on Saturday. Bye, everybody.